up, everybody? Doc, what day is it, brother? It's $10,000 motherfucker Thursday. <laughs> man, oh, man. Look at him puffing on his little hippie stick over there. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to another Thursday night session with the Rockwell Veterans Business Alliance. We got the Honorable Casey Ashmore. We got Doc Randy, and we got our brand new RDBA member, Mr. Jamie Minetto. So what we're going to do is we're going to give this man a few minutes. Jamie, why don't you go ahead and take the floor for a few minutes. Tell us about who you are, what you do, and what you can do for us. Outstanding. Thank you guys for letting me be on here for a minute. Uh, Jamie Bonetto is my name. I work at Bet Luxor Insurance out of Van Alstine, Texas. Uh, we do uh, personal and commercial insurance. Uh, just a quick little uh, tidbit on uh, why you might want to like us is we can handle pretty much every one of your insurance needs in one shop. Uh, we do group health, uh, general liability property, workman's comp. Uh, we also do personal home and auto. So we can take care of your personal home and auto and your business if you want. So uh, that That's means good. combine everything together. You can do a one one renewal, one month, month a month, pay, one month payments. Uh, you don't have to worry about anybody else. We can take care of it all. Jamie, uh, let me ask you a question, brother. Uh, you've been following us for weeks now on our Facebook Live here. What drew what drew you in to become an RVBA member? Uh, I got a notification just going go through the Facebook. I started watching it and just I, I really – I'm strong about what you guys are doing. Um, it, it's a huge impact. Anytime we can help veterans out, I'm, I'm on board with it. And, and then Casey reached out. Um, uh, Aaron um, Whitzel reached out, and then I went to that uh, first meeting down there in Rockwall. First time I've ever been to Rockwall. Um, and just had a good old time. So if I can help out, I'm, I'm, I'm playing. I love it. You know what, man? You're not local. You're a veteran, right? What branch of service? Yes. Marine Corps, Corps 21 years. Get some. Super five. So check Marine this out. The, the Rockwell Veterans Business Alliance, we're calling this movement. This is what we're doing right now. We're reaching people outside of Rockwell because we're, we're putting self-service before self. Casey, tell us a little bit about your uh, experience with Jamie, man. Hey, you got to unmute, you unmute your mic. <laughs> hey, man, it's been a long day. Got up with a... Uh, Got up at around 2:30 to start to start work this morning, and been going all day, and I feel great. And you know, we've been sharpening the saw and ready to drop some punch bombs. But you know, here's one thing that's really cool. Jamie saw something. I don't know, Facebook stream, what have you. Reached out. I reached back out to him. We had a you know a visit about come on down to Rockwall. We got this thing going on, and. It's not exactly like he lives close, y'all. I mean, he's a he's a retired Marine. He's a, a retired first responder, and he lives north of Anna, Texas. So, right, right. you know, the dude, the dude packed a lunch and came on down to the Rock to hang out with us and get to know us. And then a week later was like, I'm in. I'm all in, guys. And that's exactly right. And since that, Jamie, since that – reach out by you i've uh our our little facebook page has gotten two more communications from one is a patriot business owner and she wants to she wants to to to, to visit about what the rvba is learn more about us yeah. she, she's a a former military spouse you know but here in the area and very interested in veteran outreach and veteran service organizations like the RVBA. And then another young man. And, uh, you know, we've just ex exchanged the the text and the phone call. We haven't quite caught each other. Like Jamie, you and I just lucked out. It was like a six o'clock on a Tuesday night and we were able to, to visit for a while. You told me a little bit about you and I was like, come on down. We got this thing going on at the Texas gun ranch and it was great to the fellowship and, and just to get to hang out and meet you. And I'm, um, very, very glad that you've you've uh, engaged the RVBA and want to be part of this, man. We we need more business owners like you. Absolutely, Jamie. Leave us with one thing, real quick. Um, on obviously, I want you to put into the comments of this stream here all of your contact information. Leave us with one thing that you're willing to do to help out the RVBA. can't list one thing. I, I'm just one of those guys. You need some help. Give me a call and I'll do what I can. If I can't do it, I'll find someone that will. Um, I wanted to add real quick. I mean, yeah, I, I do commercial insurance for everybody, but I'm trying to corner the market on veterans. I'm trying to focus all my efforts on veterans. So um, if you're not a veteran, I'll still help you out, but I really want to be that veteran insurance guy for y'all. 
There you go. Well, Jamie, we appreciate you. Uh, thank you for becoming a member. We need more members like you, especially more Marines. Get some. All right. <laughs> all right, brother. Make sure you put all your information in, uh, in right. the uh, comments, and we'll take care of you. We'll hit you up soon. Thanks, brother. All right. Semper Paratus, brother. All right, man. So we got one more. We're going to keep this one quick. Hey, uh, Mr. Brandon. What's up, Mr. Brandon Cook? You got two minutes. Ready to go. What do you do? Who are you? How's it going, guys? So my name is Brandon Cook. I'm the owner of Best Choice Landscaping and Irrigation. Uh, I'm about my first year of business right now. This is really starting to pick up. Since I've joined the Rockwall Chamber of Commerce and the RVBA, it's really accelerated quickly. A lot of connections and networking and, and uh, you know, working with other veterans, being able to kind of have each other's back is, is reassuring as a new business owner. You know, having that support group and everything is really great. Um, so what I am is a landscape and irrigation, uh, commercial, residential. I'll do irrigation repairs. I'll install trees, lay sod, uh, irrigation repairs. You know, new. It, it doesn't matter. Anything irrigation and landscaping, I'm your guy. Outstanding. Well, we appreciate you uh, for joining the RBBA. We're excited to help you grow. Uh, any mentor uh, you have in mind, somebody that could help you out. You, you thinking of anybody? Because I know it's helpful. It's been helpful for me. Uh, definitely. So Doc and I have been in some communication and. And I kind of look up to him, you know, so. There you go. Get some. Yeah, yes, sir. All right, brother. Hey, you a military veteran or a patriot? I'm a veteran. Army. There you go. What do they say? Hoo-ya? Is that what it is? Hoo-ya. Hoo-ya. <laughs> Brandon, thank you so much. It means everything to us that you are putting your faith in us to become an RBBA member. Whatever you need from any of us in this leadership circle right here, we got your back, brother. That's how we do it. So you let us know. Hey, I appreciate it, guys. All right, man. You take care. We'll be in touch. Cool. <laughs> All right, Jim. Hey, real quick, real quick. You know, when you wonder like, why, why would, why would we join this organization? What, what benefit can I get out of it? How can we share with each other? Well, last week we were talking about strategic planning, right? Jamie, I don't know if you recognize this. this is a rocket book. This is what Jamie was talking about last week. It's like a quick, quick erase board. With a, with a quick erase and you just use it over and over and over again and you can scan it with your phone and send it to the cloud so you never lose your notes you never lose your strategic plan but you only need one planner the only thing you're ever going to need another one is a pen so I want to uh, I want to give a special thanks out to Jamie because Jamie heard what we were saying and brought some more knowledge about how we can level level up all right all right, so let me let me kick let me kick start something real quick here, because now we're gonna jump into we did a double member member highlight today. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna kick start all the winning baby. We're gonna get into our we're gonna get into our valuable information right now. And today we're talking about our theme is Friday the Thirteenth. Disregard the fact that this is Michael Myers music. It's just a cooler music. But what we're talking about today is going to be. What's around the corner in your business? How to see around the corner in your business and really how to take your inclinations, your gut feelings and how to push through quarter four here. So with that being said, Doc, I'm gonna let you kick this off, my man. Well, awesome. I uh, want to give a big thanks and shout out to Brandon and uh, Jamie for jumping in, joining the RVBA and being a part of a, of a momentum. And we ain't stopping, we got to train we got motivation. We got a lot of energy behind us. We ain't going anywhere, folks. We're going to be here for the long, long time. And you know why? It's because we're able to see around those corners. We're able to look ahead. We are able to implement our vision and be able to, to tackle the task ahead. Even though 2020 shit on every single person in this world, that's not going to stop us. That's the importance. That, and that's what we bring. That's the value that we bring with the RVBA. Okay. So seeing around the corner, it's not really about seeing the future and trying to, um, it's more about paying attention to what's happening, looking at those trends, understanding what your goals are, seeing what hiccups that you had in the past and how to avoid those in the future. So it's basically reevaluating what you've done in the past, what you're currently doing, and seeing how you can fine tune those things so that when you get to that sharp turn in your business, that you're ready for success, you're ready to take it to the next level, and you're not blindsided 
by something. I can't tell you how many times uh, that I've been in business that I thought I had everything organized. I thought I had everything lined out. I thought I was on the right path. And next thing you know, I'm blindsided by something that I didn't even think of. And a lot of that was because I didn't have a mentor. I didn't have um, a network of people that I could bounce ideas off of. I, I wasn't willing to freaking be honest with myself and my business to be able to take it to the next level. I was a very egotistical person. I was like, you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. I'm going to do it. I can, I can, I can. And as soon as I took the letter I out and started implementing we and a part of the growth and success of the businesses, yeah. that's when I began to see the, the corner, right? That's when I be able to began to see those little areas that I was able to avoid those pitfalls. So it's extremely important uh, to be able to understand trends in your industry. Um, it's important to be able to implement uh, things that you don't want to implement. I know a lot of people that are in an older age bracket don't want to tie in, uh, tie into social media, to TikTok, to Snapchat, to to whatever else how is out there. But at the end of the day, folks, this shit ain't going anywhere. Webinars, Zoom, StreamYard, Snapchat, TikTok, Facebook, all of that stuff is not going anywhere. This is now embedded into our daily lives. It's either you better get on this roller coaster or you're going to get left behind. And today we want to make sure that you don't get left behind. You know what I'm saying, Casey? I do. And I'm going to tell you something that, you know, for the, for the, there's, there's always early adopters of technology and we've kind of covered that in, in our superhero series, but here's something you really need to think about. If you're opposed to, everything that's going on in these little devices that you hold in your pocket, you know, where think about what I'm just going to go an example in my own business. Uh, you're going to go to a continuing education class to sharpen up the saw and do some critical networking with judges and appellate court judges and this, that, and the other. So you're going to be gone from your family and your business for three days. Usually two or three of those would be a work day, right? It's going to be a, a Thursday, a Friday, and then leave on Saturday. So that's three days in a hotel room. Then you're going to bring your wife, maybe, uh, or not. You're going to bring your team, right? You know, so it's hotel rooms for me, Doc Rannigan, Jeff Skinner, Jamie Bonetto. So hotel rooms, it's usually at a nice resort, someplace in, you know, Broken Bow, Oklahoma, Bricktown, whatever, you know, $300 a night hotel plus the airfare or the driving time to get there. Just think about all the dollars and time wasted oh, 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 going to that, right? So, so you've got to be an adopter of this technology. And the other thing is, you know, let's look at what happened to, to companies that did not adopt technology, right? What there's one blockbuster left in the United States of America. You know where it is? It's in Alaska, right? You know why? Because there's no streaming video in Alaska because Alaska is is a third bigger than Texas and has less infrastructure. Most of, most of Alaska is wilderness, right? They don't call it the Alaskan frontier for nothing. But they at one time were the dominate, the dominating force on the on the home video marketplace, but they didn't pay attention the little old Netflix and look at Netflix now, man. You know, it's 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 kind of like the, the phrase Google it. What did you binge watch on Netflix is a phrase in our society now. Right. That's what happens when you don't pay attention, when you're not trying to look at going around corners. Now, one last thing about corners that I think everybody learned from the coronavirus pandemic, right? Now, there's an article for everything, but I'm just talking about what I heard a, a, a business leader say, the guy who founded Raising Canes, started with two franchises in New Orleans, uh, in the New Orleans, Louisiana area. They got blown away in a hurricane and he learned a hard lesson. And he built it back up into 24 and they creeped into Texas and now they're up into the 30s. But here's what they were doing. They were looking for the next hurricane that was going to shutter their operations. And they paid attention to what Starbucks was doing in China in January. And they started shutting down their stores because they knew they weren't going to be able to. They stopped ordering food. They were looking around corners because they had gone through a hurricane. Right. So you take that experience. 
Yeah, we've all been going through a hurricane for five months, six months. You take that experience and you build on it, level up. So check this out. Let's dig into a little bit of what does it mean to see around corners? And it's really about seeing what's next before anyone else can see it, right? So we want to be prepared for it. We want to master the challenge of even realizing there's a challenge upon us before someone else does, right? So when we talk about, you know, to see what's coming next, a lot of people say we're forecasting. Go back two weeks from now when we said, hey, we're about to forecast what we're doing in quarter four. We want you to kill quarter four, right? We, we did an awesome show last week, probably one of my favorite ones of our whole series that we've been doing. So, Doc, what are some of the things that you can be prepared for? Like, let's, let's dig down as a business owner and to see what's coming next. How do you prepare for that? So right now inside of my business, what we are really honing in on so that we don't get caught is our end of year taxes, right? We have to make sure that we have allotted our quarterly tax payments correctly. We want to make sure that we've done our expense reports accordingly. I mean, taxes is October 15th, folks. If you don't know that shit, you better figure it out right now because you don't want to get caught with your pants down and end up owing Uncle Sam 50, 60, 70 thousand dollars that you didn't that you didn't that you totally forgot that you needed to do, right? Because ignorance is not going to save you, right? You can't just shrug your sh shoulders as a business owner and say, oh man, I forgot. Oh man, I didn't know. Oh man, I don't remember. Like that shit does not fly in the business world. You are no, held really to, you are held to a certain standard. When you sign your name to to an LLC or to an S corporation and you file that information down at the state and at the state and federal level, you are now saying that you are an adult, you're accountable, and you're willing to take whatever uh, repercussions that come to you for not doing what's, suppo what's uh, supposed to be have done. So right now, like I stated, we've been going through all of our bank statements. We've been going through our expenses, our cash flow, and understanding how much money um, that we either owe or don't owe. So that's huge that a lot of people seem to easily forget that you really need to stack that money to the side. I, for one, with the companies, is I take 20% of the profit each month and set it aside for taxes. I can't even touch that money. That money is already spent. Yeah. And the reason I do that is because about five years ago, I was caught without having the right funds. And the IRS sent me a lien. They put a lien on my home. You know what I'm saying? That's some scary ass shit. When you, when the IRS reaches into your pocket, into your freedom, <laughs> right? And says, I own you unless you give me. I was like, you know what I'm saying? Like shit so, hit the fan in my house. So I'm calling everybody I know. So, so you were able to see what was coming next and you were able to plan for that. Maybe you didn't plan for that in the experience you're talking about, right? But now you are. So oh, absolutely going back and we never lose. We always learn as Casey would say, and that's something I've taken away and taken to heart. So, you know, you want to basically be able to see what's coming next and, and you want to be able to see that before anybody as a leader in the position you are, you're a business owner, you're a CEO, whatever it may be. It's your, your uh, opportunity to take and fix that curve. You can see it. Right. So the other thing, what does it mean to see around corners is assessing risk, both positive and negative. So Casey, why don't you give us some examples um, of, of assessing what kind of risk are we talking about here? Because they can be good and bad. Unmute. So, so the risk, the ri I mean, there, there is risk. Is it, is it risky to upgrade all of your technology, right? Are you going to buy a new customer resource management software or a, you know, I know, I know that type of software is really important for, for some industries or for, you know, Doc's company. Is there a piece of software that he could invest in that might, it, it might have a big buy-in price that could help him, you know, quickly identify areas that are damaged by hail, right? You know, that that's, that's a target rich environment, right? You know, where, where would you go, you know, instead of just doing door hanger, you want to know exactly where the storm damage was. And is there some software out there that can help you identify that other things, you know, 
that 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 can really freak people out that can get to your mindset is the contraction of the economy the weakened buying power of your dollars right yeah. you know every year things go up generally you know the cost of living in the united states goes up every year everything increases every year and of course you know there's the big you know our what, what do we have a global pandemic what what is the hazard of conducting business what is the hazard of bringing my team back into my workspace that i'm paying all these you know dollars for do i expose young parents and co-workers to possibly getting something it, would that increase my cost because what if they got sick what if they sued me what if what if what if so here's here's what i you know those risk triggers you just got to embrace the suck as we say right embrace the suck i had a really good friend talk to me very candidly about starting a business a few years ago and it's funny because he never and maybe one day that'll change but he's he you know he's somebody i look up to in the practice of law a mentor a friend george freeman and he's never went out on his own he's never started his own business he's he's been a fantastic lawyer at at two different law firms and a real leader at both of those law firms but one thing he encouraged me to do and he kind of saw this as a mentor is that you know you just got to you're going to have to get used to liability and the thing you can do to set that at ease is have an insurance policy right whether whether yeah. that be you know stacks of resources you know you want to have a big operating account and a big savings account for your company so that way you're your own bank in in times of inflation or contracting markets so that way you're not having to depend on a line of credit or you know what we saw in 2007 8 9 and 10 when the credit companies like American Express Chase you know they all got they all got caught in that housing crisis and they started contracting credit and it shrank the economy more so you know those things are they can directly attack your mindset and you know that's not the same as like thinking positive like I'm thinking big I'm going to get this new you know hail detector software you know I'm going to make this $25,000 investment into this burgeoning software so I can be at the front of the you know I can be better than the docks residential roofing that I was last year because we're going to have technology to help level up to help go yeah. to this level that's very different from inflation coronavirus economic contraction contraction of credit etc that stuff can get to your mindset so a lot of this you know a lot of this is just being aware have your head on a swivel and like i said a moment ago look at what other industry leaders are doing right if they are if those industry leaders are stacking cash right like ford did before the housing collapse if they're stacking up the dollars and they ha- they want to have a lot of money to spend on R&D and they want to have a lot of money to make sure they can keep hitting payroll because they knew but based on market predictors that something was coming so they took precautions be prepared always yeah. i mean you know, i want to want to highlight a real quick jeff and this is a a positive risk and yeah. the only reason we want to highlight this right now jeff is because you're going through it all right and that's that's it So this is a positive risk and we were talking about it the other day about hiring an employee. Yeah. And how am I going to get the most amount of money out of out of this employee when I don't have enough work for that employee? Right? You you see something in somebody, you see their ambition, you see their initiative, you see their will their their willingness to grow with you, but the fact remains is the business isn't there to sustain him and his paycheck. So how do you minimize that risk? And what I suggested, put that motherfucker in your truck and take him everywhere you go. Yeah. Right? Because a lot of things are happening there, right? One, you're building a relationship with that new employee. He is seeing how he's listening to you while you're on the phone in your truck talking to clients. He's picking these things up. Yeah. So by doing that, not only are you you're you're paying him for his time but you're also giving him training at the same time. No, it, it was a solid piece of advice and and it was the you know we had talked for 15 or 20 minutes that evening and that was the one thing I took away and it it changed the whole dynamic 
of anything I was thinking about doing and how am I going to keep them busy? And I know I'm at the, I'm at the cusp of right there, almost needing someone 40 hours. But now I took that approach this week and man, he went on small jobs, big jobs, service calls, you know, this, that, and the other. And now I have a completely different mindset. That is an investment. Hiring an employee is an investment to my long-term success as a business. And it's been a great week so far. We're still in the honeymoon phase, but hey, I'm, I'm pumped, bro. I'm, tell, I'm telling you what, I have not met too many people that have a bigger OCD and attention to detail issue than I do, but I think I found them. <laughs> so here's the other thing, man. Hey, 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 be obsessed. There is nothing wrong with being obsessed. Because if you're you not bleed it, you got to. You got to bleed it. So, look, man, I tell you what, I have had so many great conversations internally in this circle with the, the 65 people that are in the RVBA, with the 150 people I know. You know, I always tell everybody if you can take away one something from every conversation and apply it somewhere in your life, then that means you are attentive and you were listening to that conversation. So, Take that and run with that, guys and gals that are listening to this. You may not feel like you're getting anything from a conversation, but it might be because you're not listening, right? We can hear Jimi Hendrix, but we're not listening to Jimi Hendrix, right? A little bit different there. Yeah. So big difference. You know, the other the other thing we, we're asking, what does it mean to see around corners is is knowing your competition. You know, we've, we've gone down this road in a whole series of branding and competition and uh, what do we call it? Um, what do we what do we we did it and it was to emulate the great right yeah and a lot of that has to do with the competition so another thing you can do is not necessarily really watch your competition and exactly what they're doing but what i want to make the point of right now here is paying attention to the signals if you see that your competition is getting the upper hand on you you need to step back and pay attention to those signals again with the blockbuster thing blockbuster could have been netflix they literally could have been Netflix if they would have jumped on the streaming service. Yeah. That's just the bottom line to it. And Netflix wouldn't be a billion dollar company right now. So take a look at your competition. Take a look at what they're doing differently than you are and what they're successful at and pay attention to the signals. It's always about the signals. You have a gut feeling for a reason. And I'll tell you, me, every time I've gone against my gut, it's kicked me right in the balls every time. So go with your gut. What do you think? Yeah, 100%. 100%. Go ahead, Casey, what do you got? No, no, sorry, Doc. Hey, hey, real quick, Doc. Happy Navy birthday tomorrow, man. <laughs> happy birthday, United States Navy. That's it right there. Um, any, anyway, uh, sorry for the side sidebar. Here, here's what I'll say about <laughs> just Just go back in the hot tub time machine for a second. Netflix started off as a mail order. Yeah. Mail order, CD competitor a blockbuster yeah you did not have to go stand at the blockbuster and maybe get mugged at midnight to return your shit <laughs> or you get charged another 14.99 late fee plus the rewind fee yeah be kind oh, rewind. right i mean remember yeah. the the rewinder be kind you know, rewind. anyway my, my point is is that early adopter of dvd technology using you know here's another thing that netflix did man they collaborated with an already existing infrastructure. They did not, they did, they did exactly, UPS took this idea. The United States Postal Service, a taxpayer funded entity, and that's how they're gonna deliver their product. Cheap, insured, bubble wrap mailers, they bought by the, by the gross, you know, probably made in China, but back then they were probably made in the USA, because that was long enough ago. But you know, just think about how inexpensive that business model was because they collaborated with someone else, right? With the United States Postal Service. And that's exactly what Amazon did to level up, right? They collaborated with the United States Postal Service, but the Postal Service couldn't handle the volume, right? You, you see an Amazon fulfillment center, the one out in Coppell, you know, man, it's like the size of the, the Cowboys training facility. It's massive. And that's just one. There's like five in this, in this metro area. So, but who they who they partner with, right? They they got a strategic partner, UPS, and they boom, they went from an online bookstore competing with Barnes and Noble. Does anybody even remember them? Yeah. What happened to them? What happened to Bookstop? Goodbye. Right? 
you know, Amazon online book sales to, you know, now they're about to take down Whole Foods. I mean, it's mind boggling, but that strategic partnership, we're going to find something that people want. We're going to partner up with people that something that they have uh, or, or that can help level us up and we don't have to pay for it all. And then boom, you got, you got the next, you got the next level. That, that's that. Now that's, you know, how do you do that in your own personal business? Well, again, emulating, you know, the, uh, the we've all said it before. The only competition you're in is the business you were yesterday, but it does not hurt to pay attention to signals, right? See what others are doing that's successful and how they're continuing to stay motivated, stay in the game, stay leaders in your space. So let me ask you this then. So let's say, you think you're doing everything right, but you're a leader and you're struggling. Why do, why do leaders struggle with seeing around corners? Uh, a lot of times we get tunnel vision. It, a, absolutely. A lot yeah. of times we get, we get tunnel vision, we get sidetracked, we get focused. And, and that's happened to me more often than not, right? Yeah. Where I have a vision, I know what I want to accomplish, but then something inevitably happens and I lose track and I run down that rabbit hole. So I'm not always clear every single day with looking at my vision board. And so over the past few years, that's what I've done and created that habit of always revisiting my vision board, always going back to that one year goal so that I can see I'm making that progress. So majority of the time leaders struggle because they lose focus on the larger picture, right? So we can start January 1 and we're like, all right, this is what I want to do. I want 25 new clients by the end of Q2. I want 100 new clients by the end of Q4. Next thing you know, you're not getting any damn new clients because COVID hit, right? So I lost vision. I lost what I was trying to do. I lost my way. And then I had to reevaluate about midway through the year in June and go, holy shit, what do I need to do to get yeah. back on track with this company? And that's when I reached out to, to people that were in the same industry that I'm in. And I'm like, what are you guys doing? How are you, how are you guys um, holding your heads above water? Yeah. And what I did, I went back and I re-looked at my vision board. I re-evaluated what I was trying to accomplish and I made some tweaks to my overall vision. I didn't change what it was. I just changed the path to get there. But you never lost sight of the big picture. Never lost sight of the right. big picture. And You're that's, absolutely right. That's the key but I word. did lose sight when I became tunnel vision, right? Yeah. I was unable to see it because I was so worried about the risk that was, that was coming down the pipe. I was so worried about the financial burden that was coming down the pipe. And one side that said, you know what? Fuck the worrying then things started to pan out. Once I said, you know what, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna trust in something bigger than me and allow it to happen. Yeah. And I'm gonna do what's right right now so that it'll benefit me at the end of the year, right? And so that's where I see a lot of leaders failing at is because they fail to focus on today that will benefit them tomorrow. Yeah, because it's not it's not hard to get caught up in the structured chaos too. But another thing too yeah. They, yeah. is, you know, what about buying patterns? I mean, so I'll, I'll pop in on that too. So buying patterns, right? So in the industry, the other industry I'm in, in construction, the cost of material has gone through the roof. <laughs> no pun intended, okay? But the cost of material <laughs> has gone up significantly. And when the price of material goes up, that means my, and the value of my dollar does not, that means my buying power has become weakened. Well, I, I do see your point with that one, Doc. But I, I think what, what we're talking about more is seeing the shift in buying patterns, right? So more so of like, okay, my industry is no longer buying this technology or my target market's no longer going this way with the, the purchases they're making. They're going more this way. So it's very, especially in my industry, it's very easy to lose sight of, oh, you know, I think everybody wants this, but they may be on left field over here doing that. Do you see this in your business at all, Casey? It's a little bit different because you're not really selling a tangible item, but, you know, relate that to your, your business. Well, I've been doing, and there's a lot of 
there's a lot of parallels, even though you're right. It is a, it is a different business. Yeah. You got to have some, I, I am just a believer in that. You got to have some freeze, right? You got to have some free stuff. What do you give away that's free? What, yeah. what, what's your lowest price item? And why wouldn't you pack that with all the wow and pizzazz you could, right? So a free console. Now that's standard in our industry, but there are attorneys that I know that, you know, they charge for a console. It's 250 bucks an hour. If you want me to, if you want me to get on the phone, it's 200. There's nothing wrong with that. But that to me is, that's not one of the ways that I think you can, you can convince a client that not only hiring you would be the best decision to ever make for their, for their particular problem, but that even if it costs 10 times the price, yeah. that, that they'd still be getting a bargain because you've packed so much wow into your free product. Well, that's you kind of seeing around the corner too, right? That's you kind of seeing, hey, that's, exactly, that's what they're competitor. calling you for, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, hey, man, I got this problem. Your, your competitors it's, are doing something different. So I, you're, you're seeing around the corner to cut the, cut the you know, go as a crow flies. Right. You right. cut that off. Right. And so uh, another thing I think you got to have is you've got to you, innovate. You've got to innovate. Yeah. There was a significant financial panic. I won't call it a contraction, but America, you know, puckered up in March, April and May. Man, people were not spending the I bet, I bet you were not hanging the, the volume of uh, AV equipment that you are right now in March, April, May. People were chilling out. They were not spending. They were not donating to charity. People were worried about what the frick is going. I mean, it was spring break. And then the next thing you know, the kids are home indefinitely, right? They spent all their money on, on toilet paper. That's why. Yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, you know, if you needed water and, and uh, TP, good gravy. Anyhow, you know, so what you got to do in a situation like that, you got to innovate, right? You know, so started coming up with packages and I actually, did a, something very similar to what Doc did. I started observing what my colleagues were doing. And I'm not going to call them competition because I think, like I said, all the time, the only person that, that, that the three of us are in competition with is the person we were yesterday. Yep. So, But I, there's nothing wrong with being observant and there's nothing wrong with like cluing in to like, hey, do you have a, do you have a need for a low cost legal service? And can we fill that need? What's that price point? Let's come up with some innovative ways to try to help people at a time when they might be worried about spending all the dollars. I just got sued in a lawsuit. I don't know if my company is going to go back into normal operations. What can you do? What low cost solution, right? So you got that, you got the, you know, you start thinking about that, innovating the new product. Absolutely. And then the big, you know, the, the big thing is, is that how do you sell your big products, right? Your big products like, we are going to, I got hired on Monday, trial is on Tuesday, and the, and the next part of that trial is on Thursday, right? That, that's a big sell, right? You need to commit the next 72 plus hours of your life, you're going to be spending with me in a courtroom. You just met me, and you have to make a huge financial and time commitment in the hope, right, that I'm going to call the audible right, and we're going to have a touchdown at the end of the day. Now it didn't work out, but a lot of that had to do with that didn't have to do with converting the lead into a a client. That had to do with the wow, right? That free console. What happened at that free console, man? Your free product needs to be the wow. And then the other thing, real quick, I want to go back to what Doc said about the vision board and something that I had to be reminded of. And it was so poignant. And you guys reminded me of it. And I started seeking out, like, hey man, I need to start mining through. Uh, old content, new content. I need to, you got to remember your big vision board. It's easy to lose track of it. The way you don't lose track of it is process goals, right? You've got to figure out the baby step, the process goals, right? Did you run when I was 18 years old, 17 years old, I was in the Boy Scouts and we rode the MS 150, right? That's a 150 kilometer race on bicycles on I-10. That's the dumbest shit I've done on a bicycle in my life. You're like dodging 18 wheelers and wind and whatever. Hey, what are you talking about right now, man? What, what are you trying to get? What, what I'm saying right is now? you need you need to train up for that, right? You're not going to jump on a bicycle and race 150 kilometers. 
You get, you're going to get a freaking Kawasaki. That's right. You no, know. no, no. I'm, I'm just saying, you know, process goals. How do you get yeah. ready for a marathon, right? How do you get ready for a big race? Process goals. You're going to go out on Saturday. You're going to ride five miles. The next Saturday, you're going to ride seven. The Saturday after that, you're going to ice your leg down because Doc says you're a bonehead and you need two Advil and a water. The Saturday after that, you're going to ride 12 miles. You build up process goals. Okay. So – I guess the last point we want to make here is, is in why leaders are struggling to see around the corners. It's something that I can speak on because it's happening to me now. And it's, and it's keeping in mind your supply chain and your distribution channels. If you're a business that sells a tangible item to a client, then you need to always be aware of when, how, how much it costs and what you're going to do to get product right now with the, with the way things are going, with the supply chains and things like that, it's hitting our industry, the AV industry, and multiple other industries very, very much so. You know, it's product that we can't get, or it's sh it's sitting off the coast at LA because it's stuck in customs or whatever. So, failure to see around the corner is also failure to plan because if you're selling tangible items and you can't get those tangible items, what do you do? You, you, I mean, you're you're lucky if you're like me and you got some really cool clients that are like, hey, I get it. My business is going through the same thing too, but let's say you get a lawyer. Let's say you get the honorable Casey Ashmore who doesn't sell tangible items and gives absolutely two shits that you can't get the product. There's a high possibility that if you haven't planned properly and you don't know your supply chain, that client will go to someone else, i.e. a big box store or somebody who's going to do it cheaper, right? Because they may have cheaper products. So make sure you're always staying in touch with your vendors. You know, there, there's more to a vendor than just, I'm going to give you money, you're going to give me product. I urge each one of you guys to make relationships with your vendors because there's going to be that one time where you have to go to that vendor and say, you know what, I need some help on this order because I had to cut a little off the bottom to kind of beat this other competition out. Can you give me the discount that I provided the discount, so forth and so on? Or, hey, I got this product. It's out of warranty. Two weeks right? Can you help me out? You know, I've spent a hundred grand with you and we build that relationship. Boom. They're going to go and help you out. So make sure you're staying in touch with the supply chain, your distribution channels, and make relationships that are lasting relationships with your vendors. That's a huge yeah, I, I want to, I want to just cap, uh, capitalize on what you're saying there with those vendor relationships. Um, in the industry that I serve, um, it, it, it was absolutely huge that the relationship that I've built with my vendors over the last five years, they have gotten me out of a couple of tight spots. Um, whereas a lot of these homeowners wanted to install their roof on a Saturday. Yeah. Right. My deliveries don't happen on a Saturday. No. My vendor said, you know what, Mike, you guys do a hell of a job. You guys bring and spend a ton of money here. We're going to make a sec. You know what I mean? They charge me a little bit more money for a Saturday yeah. delivery but they committed and brought one of their guys in and ha and delivered my stuff on a Saturday in order to, to make me happy, right? In order to continue to grow that relationship. So it is definitely imperative. And I'll, and I'll also tack on that when the COVID hit and the other company began doing COVID testing, I can't tell you, I waited four months to be able to start doing uh, different types of testing because of the supply chain from China to from China yeah. to to yeah baby watch out. my phone it loves to party that's all I know it's a party phone it's an iPhone party phone hey but I'll tell you one thing doc and I'm gonna be willing to bet that them taking care of you had about this much to do with the money you spend and about this much to do with the relationship you built. Absolutely. Without question. Yeah, because I'm in the store all the time. I'm shaking hands with yeah. them. I'm grabbing new product and bringing it out and showing new cl my new clients. So it's a give and take with vendor relationship. Again, if you're out there and you're in that industry where there are uh, supplies that you provide, always be on the lookout for the new trend. Always be on the lookout for the next and greatest um, piece of gear. Right now, we're leaning to – I know this, a lot of people are this is going to sound extremely Greek – but we're going into hell resistant shingles, right? Or we're going into a product that, um, that man, how can you sell that? What? I'm just kidding. I think it's brilliant, dude. I think you're going to, I think you're going to, you're going to level that out. People oh, are going to be, be all over it. it, it it's going to be great. And so either way, we just definitely need to understand. Um, don't worry about the past. 
we're going to jump into some action items, right? And what to, to, to do to improve your vision and seeing around the corner. So Tracy, I, I think I'd like you to jump on this one because I, you and I talk a lot about this and forget the past, embrace the future. Tell us about that. What does that mean? So look, man, uh, we all know who the home run leader of all time used to be uh, pre steroids. And that's hammer and Hank Aaron. Right. And we also know that the strikeout leader of all time was hammer and Hank Aaron. The touchdown leader of all time briefly was Brett Favre, also the interception leader of all time. You got to have a short memory. You have 3,000 at bats. You are not going to hit a home run every time, right? So you got to, you, one, you got to have the right mindset because you're going to have setbacks. So you, you win or you learn, right? That's what happens at the courthouse. You don't lose. You win or you learn. You learn how to do it better. You know, you, you get it right on the appeal whatever the thing may be. Uh, and, and that's different when you when you have a finite job at a customer's house, you got to do it right, you know, but you're learning. Uh, and, and again, that you got to have short memory when, yeah. when you have a learning situation. And and let me rephrase that. The, the negative emotions that, that might you might have about this didn't go right, Vendor didn't do me right. I didn't get the product on time. I couldn't perform. I couldn't exceed expectations. And and you're beating yourself up. You got to have a short memory on that. And you got to you got to again come up with some better process plans to make sure that it never happens again. So you're you're in alignment with your big strategic plans. Absolutely. Those little process plans to make sure you don't hit those trip wires again. To make sure that. You don't fumble on the one one yard line, man. You hit the touchdown. You hit that open hole. That's one big thing that I I think we all need to. And you can't hear that enough, in my opinion, because uh, you, otherwise you're moving backwards. I love the short memory thing. You, you got to have a short memory. You you got to, and you also got to learn how to stay in your lane, right, Doug? Man, I can't tell you how important uh, that is to me, and and I preach that in the industry that I'm in, right? A lot of people are they're like hey you're a roofer so you can paint <laughs> i'm like no bro i mean i can't paint i can i can shingle the shit out of your roof um you know what i mean because i stay in my lane and because i have gotten outside of my lane and said and took on some projects of, of interior remodeling it didn't turn out the way i wanted it to turn out i actually lost money there's some yeah. things where i ventured off to where i should have never ventured towards mm -hmm. right i want to be the best damn roofer in the Dallas Metroplex, yeah. right? So when I get asked a question about what is the latest and greatest X, Y, and Z, I have that knowledge and I'm spitting it. But here's what I'm also great at, and this is part of my lane, and that's putting people together with the right people. You know what I mean? So basically, I had to remove my pride and tell somebody I can't do it, but I got somebody that can and not ask for any sort of monetary gain yeah right? and that's one of my core competencies right honesty transparency and loyalty to my brand you know what i mean well, and that's something you built up over the years too so that's not an overnight thing you know that's overnight, overnight that's success takes 10 years that's the same way with your core competencies and staying in your freaking lane if yeah. you're a roofer you roof if you you're roof. a legal you know, you're a, you're a lawyer and attorney. You're not going to see him painting someone's house. Absolutely, man. Maybe his own, but it ain't going to be yours. <laughs> right. You know, so it, it's it's so imperative that whenever you come up with your core competencies, you don't take it lightly. You take yeah. it. They they didn't. You live it. You breathe it. You do it. And if and you do, and you're doing your core competencies without knowledge, right? These are just muscle memory to to tell the truth to stay, keep things 100 and to be loyal to your, to your client. Yeah. You know, that's, that's really all it takes. And it sounds so damn simple, but it's extremely hard, right? Because you got to compete with all these other liars and, and people that are willing to just tell you whatever to, to get that check. Yeah. I got you, man. What? Yeah. DWI and you killed that kid. Don't worry. I'll get you off. You're like, Whoa, what the fuck? You need to go to jail, bro. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm no. saying? Like get out of here. <laughs> right. the door. Understanding that is extremely important. Staying in your lane is is 
man, I can't tell you how many times I tell the people I work with, focus on what you're good at. Yeah. Right? Be excellent at the 20% of what you're great at and delegate the other 80 and you will be successful. You know, the other thing too is, you know, being diverse in your services and offering. In case you was touching on this earlier about innovating, right? If, if you're, you're, you know, we've already used a Netflix and Blockbuster example, but if you're a company that sees yourself becoming stagnant, you got to stop. You got to pump the brakes and you got to say, okay, what other services? Like uh, today, the new hire that I just brought on, outstanding guy, didn't even tell me that he was an Apple specialist. That to me is a whole other avenue that I can approach with my business. I can now bring in to your house an Apple specialist. You don't have to go to the Genius Bar, right? So you've got to be diverse in your services. It's all, all good and all gravy being 110% really great at staying in your lane, right? The moment that lane starts shrinking and you start seeing your money shrink, your revenue is no longer there. You better open that daggone lane back up and be diverse. Come up yeah. with some different things that are going to bring in revenue. And if and you I can't have, figure that out, you better start asking your circle for some ideas. Well, you know? and I definitely did in the roofing industry. It still roofs, though. But I just went from knowing and being great at shingles to knowing and being great at metal to yeah. knowing and being great at tile to commercial to different types of coating systems. But it all pertains to the roof, right? So, right. so you can stay in your lane and become, become diverse in your lane. Absolutely. Just as, just as a lawyer, you are if you're a criminal lawyer, you can take on all types of criminal, right? But you're yeah. not going to be a defendant or a prosecutor or whatever the shit no. whatever it is, right? You're going to stay in your line, your lane of what you practice. Yeah, that, that's exactly right. You know, like there's a, there's a whole diverse, like, like mergers and acquisitions. Man, that ain't for me, dog. Like I just ain't for me. I, looking at papers and contracts all day long, not having it drafting, estate planning, you know, good at it. I can, I can do it. I, am I the best at it? I could be if I wanted to be. Yeah. It, what, what is my passion? Trial advocacy. That's what I love being in the courtroom. I love the fight, tape up, you know, put the, put the Everlast gloves on, step it, you know, not a lot of people want to get the, put those ropes up, step in that ring and get beat on for half a day. And then, get up and beat on the other side for half a day and then do that all over again. Right. And, but I love that. But again, be the master of that space. You're not going to see me in the bankruptcy courthouse, you know, reorganizing American airlines. Yeah. There, there's a referral for that. Right. That's, that's the 80% I could be amazing at if I really, really wanted to drill down on it. But what's the, you, another thing you got to think about if this is something that's outside of your, your prime specialty, like that interior design, that painting doc, how much are you going to have to spend over to educate yourself just on your own personal time to educate yourself, to make sure that job is done to the standards that you hold docs, residential roofing. So you're going to be investing two, three times more effort just to be competent in this new area. There's definitely nothing wrong with what Jeff's talking about though, about widening up the top line, being innovative, bringing in new products and services, but again, focus on what your core business is. Now, Jeff's got another component to his core business income uh, with this new new hire because this guy can help him for the people who, like myself, love the Apple, right? You know, yeah. that dark side, and that's that is a niche, and it's a great mm -hmm. niche, Jeff. Well, I wanted to, to to point in on something, and this kind of relates to staying in your lane, and you wanted to expand. If you want to expand to another uh, portion of your industry, and instead of me taking the time out to learn it and become an expert in it, just hire the fucking expert and, and get to work. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't don't muddy the waters trying to be in, wearing too many hats. At one point I, in time, I wore way too many hats yeah. and I could never get shit accomplished. Jeff, so I, got a, I got a friend. I got a friend. Cut that music off, bro. Like I'm in this building by myself right now. <laughs> I got a friend who told me something funny. He was like, he would walk across the floor to squeeze the eagle off a quarter. Okay. Yeah. He was so anti-employee. He was so anti-outsourcing. He's like, why would you send that down the street when you can keep all that money? But he didn't understand that if he sent it down the street to the expert, right, to the other guy, 
He referred it out. He might get a referral back, but more importantly, he's now freed up to do all this other stuff that's just sitting around waiting to be done. The great I'll tell you what, relationships are key. And as a as a leader in your business, as a CEO, a project manager, operations manager, you've got to know how to see around the corner. And this isn't about predicting the future at all. This is about listening to your gut. This is about using your experience. And it's all it, it's paying attention to the signals, guys, gals. It's the signals. You know, you, you got experience, you got confidence. We're all crushing Q4. That's our goal. That's what we're doing. And today we want you to take away from this a couple key things. Look around the corners. Make sure you're taking care of the big picture. Always focus. Even if you get tunnel vision, go back to big picture. Check out your supply chain, your distribution channel, and, and, and check those buying patterns. See where your clients, see where your market's going. We're, we're here every week for you guys. The Rockwell Veterans Business Alliance, man. Without these two guys right here, these things wouldn't be possible. You guys, I appreciate the hell out of you guys. I appreciate everything you do. It means the world to me. Our members, thank you so much. We got the new guys coming in. I'll say this, and I'm going to be a little cocky right now for this. We are the leading affiliate in the Rockwell Chamber of Commerce. You can put that on the money. You can put it on a hundred dollar bill, signed, sealed, and delivered. You want to be a part of the movement? Get involved with the RVBA because we're making moves. We're making others successful around us, which in turn makes us successful. We have a servant's attitude, and we love our freaking members. So if you want to get involved, we all, all the veterans that are out there, our patriots, we love the hell out of you guys. We appreciate it. And again, I love you guys. You guys are my. You guys are my rocks, man. You guys helped put all this together. We're successful because of you. So thank you guys very much. Hey, and let you guys know, we got the building. We got it ready. We got the power board right here, ready to jam notes, collaborate, brainstorm. We're here to make shit happen. We're here to take you guys to a whole nother level of business that we already knew you could do. You just need somebody to tell you that you can do it. You guys have a great Friday, great weekend. We look forward to next Thursday and getting together with you guys again. Thank you, gentlemen. Appreciate you. Bye, boys. Happy birthday, Navy. Hey, That's Jeff. That's a great looking shirt, by the way. That is a great looking shirt. That's <laughs> one right here. Right here. Oh. <laughs> yeah, baby. All right, boys. Have a good night. See ya. Right.